Dufferin Kaladin. Welcome to this edition of Dufferin Life. I'm your host, Tina Avery. Thank you so much for joining me today. Joining me today, we have one of my favorite peeps. She <laughs> comes from Theatre Orangeville, Kate, the program coordinator. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I love being here. I love having you yeah. on the show. I, was, I, I, I wish people could have seen us just laughing and giggling yeah. before we got started. But um, So you're here to talk about The Young Company. Yes. So let's, talk, let's assume that some people who are watching may not know what Young Company is. What is the Young Company? Young Company is a program for our youth at, in the community mm -hmm. uh, for grades 7 to 12. Okay. Sometimes we get a little earlier kids than that, grade 6 and up, uh, and it's giving them a professional experience at the theater. So we do a show, we pick a show every year, every summer, usually a musical, and then a drama. Okay. And they get a chance to work with a professional director, they work with our professional production team that, you know, they're the ones that build all of those main, sto main stage shows. Mm -hmm. and so these kids get an opportunity to see a production from start to finish. They audition, they go through this learning process, they get to experience being costumed and what it means to be a collective and an ensemble and then what it means to market your own show, which is right. huge. And then putting it on. It's like this whole thing. So. That's, that's an incredible experience. Yeah. So let's, well, but we're going to get back to the kids, but we're going to ask you mm. how do you go about picking the shows? A lot of watching shows, which as a, like, a theater nerd is super fun. <laughs> like, what a cool job to just be like, yeah, I get to watch shows. And then um, I kind of also get to talk to the kids too. So we have a youth advisory committee and we have conversations. What are you interested in talking about? And then I think about kind of what are themes that I think are relevant in today's age and mm -hmm. what do people want to see when they, you know, click on our website and go, oh, this would be interesting to bring to my family. So all of those things kind of come and we then talk to the team at Theatre Orangeville and go, okay, this is the one that we're going to do. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So you've got two shows coming, which we're not going to talk about just yet. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about, um, so the kids, they, they audition. Do they need to have experience before they audition? No. We're, this is an educational program first, right? So it is a program and then it's a show. We are super encouraging that if you do not know anything about theater that you come on in and you get to learn and experience it with us and there's so many different things that you get to experience that then you might go on and get to try something new right you come in and you audition and you act but then maybe you fall in love with lighting design too right there's right. all these other avenues to it and I think I love that they get to see all of it yeah right let's talk about what Q to Q is and what that Ooh. means for those kids that maybe have never done it before or you know are yeah. doing it and just it's craziness Our, yeah it's craziness and it's really grueling and I think once we get into that tech week Q to Q all of that fun stuff lighting levels that's really where we kind of get to see that professional aspect and they get a feel for what it means to work with that professional team, mm -hmm. right? Our designers are right there and they're kind of getting to see what it's like for the show to get built production-wise, like the lights are there, the sound cues are coming in, um, and they're asked to be patient and and they are they're they're <laughs> so good right they at that yeah. point they're they're so, so psyched to be actually so, doing yeah. it yeah yeah so it's it's really intense but it's that excitement where all the production stuff kind of starts to come alive and they literally move from Q to Q yeah. in case you were wondering what we were talking about right like like they literally are like okay so Bob is standing here but yeah. now Bob has to walk over to Tom who's standing over here and they yeah. place themselves on the stage that basically to, it? You pretty much yeah. and they have to know exactly where they are in the show and like so everything it's not just lines that they're memorizing it's the part in place within the show so that they can do that okay we're going from lighting cue 12 do a little bit of the scene stop okay we're gonna go to lighting cue 13 oh, which wow. might be like a page and a half next in the script <laughs> right like right it's hard to jump through it like that yeah but that really gives them quite the experience mm. like I mean I think that um, you know and I would imagine too that 
doing this, especially if you're, because there are acting nerds and there are like, you know what I mean? And there are people who are just flamboyant and just want to be out there mm. all the time. But it has to really build self-confidence. It builds self-confidence. It builds social skills, right? They get a chance to not only on the stage, but also in the room, kind of decide and play with like who they are as a person and then mm -hmm. build those skills. They really form this community with the, with the other cast members and they walk away with this confidence, but this family too, which is really nice. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for some kids that's really, really important. Yeah, it like really just, is. Just to have that, because uh, not everybody has that at home or not everyone has that wherever they are. Mm. Um, and they just, you just, I think everybody needs to do it and I don't think everybody yeah. will. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, sure. have to really want to be on stage. Yeah. 100%. Did you get nervous when you used to go on stage? A hundred percent. Yeah. But it's those good nerves, that's what I tell the kids now, right? For me, I always kind of visualize it, the difference between moths and butterflies. Like mm -hmm. when I'm about to step on stage, it's it's that butterfly feeling, right? Right. And it ultimately just means that you care for what you're about to do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we want to get to the shows, for yeah. sure, well, for sure. So we've got, <laughs> what's the first show coming up? So in July, we have our musical, and we're doing The Addams Family. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited for it. The the score is so good. The music's super fun and it's, you know, there's this comedy aspect to it, right? It's mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a lot of relevancy because there's a lot of hype around the Adams family right now. Yeah, yeah, there definitely is with yeah. the show Wednesday is definitely mm -hmm. very, very popular and I think that's kind of um, given a, a boost and a jolt to yeah. the Adams family and the whole concept behind it. Mm -hmm. So for those people who may not know about the Adams family, tell us a little bit what the show is about. Yeah, so it's this kind of quirky family, kind of dark, but uh, very, they're very funny. Mm -hmm. um, and they live kind of a flip of the normal right. lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little darker. Um, there's these ancestors that we kind of see and um, yeah, so it's really different in that sense. It's a different storyline than maybe you would have seen in the movies mm -hmm. or from the TV show. So that's kind of new too, but it's those same kind of core characters that we yeah. love from the Adams Family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so let's talk about, so we're in a musical, it's the Adams mm -hmm. Family. Um, what's the difference in working with the cast between a musical and like a, say a drama or a comedy? Uh, well, the music, there's a musical director that'll be in the room, so we kind of get to see that aspect come to life. Mm -hmm. So they get this whole experience of learning all about the scenes, but then also what it means to learn how do you read music, how do you harmonize, mm -hmm. um, how do you float from scene to song to scene, right? Those transitions in right, order to make them right. smooth and carry the show along. So there's so some a lot of work for yeah, them. Yeah, it is. The musical's <laughs> a big, big chunk of work. And how long do they rehearse for? They have four weeks. So it's a wow. four-week intensive, Monday through Friday, nine to four. Uh, yeah, it's a really intense program. and but they get a good feel for what it means to be in the professional world because it's pretty similar to that. Right, and, and is yeah. this playing at the Theatre Orangeville? Yes, it'll yeah, be on at the, the Theatre Orangeville Opera House. We're super excited. It's been a while since we've offered a musical program and we're really thrilled to be back at a place where we can do that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and you just had the toys go by not that yes. long ago. and you, Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's great that we can be um, watching and mm -hmm. for those people participating, singing on stage. And, yeah. yeah, 100%. So how many people? How many people in the cast? So it's a bit of a smaller cast. We have nine okay. joining us, uh, but we are really excited to have them and uh, to get them to experience that. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Adams Family character? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I I probably would say that I love. I do love Gomez, I think. Yeah. I think he's really funny. He uh, can be, yeah. He's pretty yeah. cheeky. <laughs> he's, pretty, he's pretty cheeky. I also love Lurch, too. Okay. That's probably... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So um, the Adams Family is playing from June, uh, July, sorry, 28th to July 9th. Uh, 
30th, my goodness, July 28th to July 30th <laughs> um, at the Theater Orangeville Opera House. Mm -hmm. So check it out, www.theaterorangeville.ca or call the box office at 519-942-3423. Um, and I have it memorized. Um, <laughs> so and if you're just tuning in, um, and let's say for instance, the show is going past July 30th. You haven't missed out, so don't go anywhere because we're going to now ask Kate about the next show that's coming up yes. yeah, at Theatre Orangeville for the Young Company. Yeah, so in August, we will be putting on our drama of Young Company, and we are doing Puffs. Okay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Puffs. So Puffs is this magical show set in... A uh, big house <laughs> outside, <laughs> way or outside, way, way across the seas. Mm -hmm. um, it is about. It takes place along the storylines of some magical boy mm -hmm. uh, who we may know about, um, and it follows that storyline of the puffs. Okay. Um, those seven years. Okay. With puffs and yeah, so it kind of gives a fresh perspective on perhaps a storyline that we are familiar <laughs> with, and I'm being super vague on purpose. I understand. <laughs> it is yeah. um, a parody or a spoof, and so uh -huh. we're really excited about that. So that means it's also a like laugh out loud comedy. It's Amazing. really really funny. Okay. Um, and it's really quick dialogue, which is really fun for the kids to get to learn and experience. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of comedy is, okay. is different sometimes and how we learn about it. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, I would imagine, I think there's a, there would have to be a lot of nerves doing a comedy because you have to land the jokes correctly. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's um, really... It can be a lot of pressure, but the, the kids that we have were so lucky. They really just thrive off of, like, how do I make this work? And so, yeah, they kind of just go with it and run. So it's a storyline on he who shall not be named. Yes. <laughs> um, and um, kind of an offshoot and very magical mm. <laughs> in case Edward, you know I'm just trying to give the hints but not give it away completely yeah. completely so these kids also are you do these overlap with rehearsals like do you have them going at the same time we don't have them going at the same time so we we wrap our musical and then we wrap we wrap the musical on the Sunday and the Monday we start with the drama okay so we have some overlap with the kids but we also have some new faces that we'll be seeing that weren't in the musical that will be joining us for the drama oh that's so exciting yeah. that's so yeah. exciting we have um, not very much time left probably okay. under a minute minute what's your uh, as few words as possible what's your favorite part about your job oh I think it would have to be being able to talk to the youth and engage them and providing opportunities for them to fall in love with something I'm in love with, which is theater. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Kate used to be on the Theater Orangeville stage, in case you didn't know that. And so I know Theater Orangeville is super uber happy to have you where you are now working yeah. with all the kids. Yeah. I want to thank you for joining me today. Mm. Thank you. And make sure you go out to catch both of these shows, The Adams Family and Puffs, happening at Theatre Orangeville with their young company. And don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. There we go. is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hi, I'm Alicia O'Hara Stevenson, host of In Conversation with Alicia. In the next episode, I sit down with Dr. Jasmine Prutil talking about evolving the Museum of Dufferin and cataloging our rich and diverse history right here in Dufferin County. We talk about her journey studying in the UK, completing her PhD at Oxford University, and so much more. Hi, I'm Angel.
Angel Morgan, host of Raising Energy on Rogers TV. Join us in our live studio audience for free, fast-paced, and fun psychic readings just for you right here on Rogers. Welcome back to Dufferin Life. If you're just tuning in, you tuned in at a great time because we're going to learn some stuff about air purification. Joining me today, we have Brad Reed from Brighter Future Homes. Brad, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. So let's talk about organic air purifiers. Sure. Tell me a little bit about them. It's just like any other type of air purifier. Okay. Um, we're forcing dirty air through a medium, except ours is organic, obviously. So it's a substrate, instead of being a paper filter, Okay. it's gonna be full of plants, ideally, but ours also have soil aggregates and living things like nematodes and okay. fungi that live in the soil. So lots of different stuff. That is blowing my mind. I didn't even realize that what it was. I'm just like, hey, I didn't realize that there was that much in them. I understand the, the concept of the plants and, and that sort of thing. So um, in relation to what we, the one thing that I've always heard of are HEPA filters. So is, is there a large difference between a HEPA filter and, and well, I like to tell everybody that we're better because we are better than HEPA filters. We do affect more air. We have more air benefits. So okay. a HEPA filter is going to do like particulate matter uh, and some VOCs and some formaldehyde. For formaldehyde, sorry. Okay. Um, it's like particulate matter though is really okay. what they're meant for. Um, they're not going to impact gases like oxygen or CO2. Okay. Um, so in the case like right now, all of our buildings currently rely on the levels outside to regulate the levels inside. Okay. Um, so our system's kind of better in that sense, that it doesn't just do all the particulate matter, it does oxygen, CO2, and air humidity too. Okay. So, I mean, there's, there's a rash of um, wildfires, forest fires happening all over the place um, that, that, that are happening all around us. And, and for the first time in what I think ever since my existence, anyways, we're actually getting pollution air warnings because of um, these forest fires that the smoke is blowing through and like we're actually seeing it in Dufferin County. We're actually smelling it when you walk out of your house. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would think that this would be like this is something new for us to deal with and that those even though it's outside it's getting into your home. It is yeah unfortunately that's why they, they'll say with people with uh, you know respiratory issues to stay inside during those days and yeah it's curious, it, you're right I've never remember as being a kid seeing a little symbol on the weather network where it's not sunny and cloud or something it was smoke yeah. you know and I'm like oh wow so that's uh, it's definitely new and unfortunately it's probably going to be something that we are going to deal with Right. Moving forward more commonly as we kind of adjust to climate change and shifting stuff going on in our life. Well, that's it. I mean, like, I mean, um, for lack of a better term, the weather is sometimes as banana pants. Um, that's what I call it, banana pants. Um, but I mean, like, you're getting this extremely hot and like, I just, I mean, we, we've we always heard about forest fires in BC. I mean, you don't hear about forest fires hitting Ontario or anywhere close to. Um, so it's definitely something that, that is more of a concern. So how do we know what the air is like in our house before we have something like this in it? Well, that's why we do air testing as well, obviously, okay. because people generally have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, and HEPA filters will just say we remove 99% of whatever's in the air. But, you know, that's from the second that that filter's turned on, it's going to start filling up with stuff. Okay. And start to, that 99% starts to go down. Our filters are, are not doing that. They're constantly going to be cleaning about okay. 50 cubic feet of air per minute. Um, yeah. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> no, it definitely does. It definitely does. Because, I mean, like, if when you want to test your water, you've got to test your water. But I don't think we think about... Um, testing air. Sorry, yeah, you, it was testing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that the, uh, we do test the air quality before we go in. We'll actually offer that complimentary with larger businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, something that's been very popular lately because nobody knows, and each environment is very different. So that. HEPA filter, like you said, that you go in, depending on the environmental pollutant load, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to last shorter or longer, right? So okay. if it's in a really dirty, if you were to take a HEPA filter and throw it in the, the hayloft, it's mm -hmm. going to clog up really quickly, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, we like to go in, do actual measurements that include oxygen and CO2 and air humidity, too, okay. for people, and then we'll put some products in, and then we can do more snapshots of the air data uh, and show you exactly what's happened. Okay. So you can see for yourself. And generally we get like at least a 50% reduction in particulate matter. Okay. Um, and we'll see a 
And many. that's the particles in the air, that's correct? The, yeah, particulate matters, uh, dust. Anything on a sunny day when you see it through the sun rays coming through the window and you see that little stuff floating in mm -hmm. the air, that's particulate matter per It's frightening square. sometimes when you... <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, you really have to dust your... Yeah, like you, there's, you can see a lot in the air. And, yeah. and I don't think that, uh, and which is why you're here, and this is why we're talking about it, is I don't think people really think about the quality of the air in their home. Like you go outside and you're like, oh, it's very humid out, or you know what I mean, or you know, something's blowing in the wind, whatever it happens to be, but I don't think people pay enough attention to the air in their homes. Totally. You're, uh, it's unfortunate. You're right. It's, well, we take it for granted mm -hmm. a lot of the time. It's clear. We can't see it, right? So it's only once we start to see it that we start to think about it okay. or yeah. once once we have a respiratory problem then we start to really notice it so it's really unfortunate it's one of those things you do take for granted until it's too late type thing yeah um, uh, very much so so and yeah. when we do see it we just think oh I better dust yeah <laughs> you don't really think about like that's in the air all the time I'm breathing it in I'm breathing it you know some of it's going in some of it's not coming back out and you know it, it does affect how you breathe so you did bring a unit with us with you today yeah, which I want one. you to just tell me a little bit about what we're looking at while uh, we, we have these small it. standalone versions are just plug-and-play so you can put them anywhere in the home and they've got contained lighting obviously and watering systems okay so that you don't have to you fill it up with water once a month type thing okay and instead of so instead of replacing a filter for example mm -hmm. you're just gonna add water to it once a month something that's much more readily accessible it's from the tap right and you don't have to go to the store and buy a specialized sized filter uh, for 40 to 80 dollars or something so these plants are now helping to purify the air yeah okay exactly the air is being forced through the plants just like and there the plants are modular inserts so you can play up play with the layout of a, a we've got tons of different plant options to choose from um, but we've also got people that have them in their homes and they have green thumbs and they've put in herbs and spices and stuff into the unit as well okay so that they're yeah they're taking advantage of having this little brilliant grow system I was um, just gonna ask you about that like will this help plants grow better in your home absolutely it's designed yeah. so you can automate the watering and lighting systems to suit a lot of ra a different range of plants okay we like to put some hardy plants in that can stand a 12-hour day because that's when they're actively metabolizing the most but the real secret sauce is what's going on at the root level. Uh, it's not it's not the roots of the plants, it's at the root level. So that's why we're actively circulating the, the air right into them all the time. Okay. The bottom of it kind of looks like an ice cube tray, so it really maximizes the surface area. And then it's always a little bit moist, so that air and dust is polarized, is, is attracted to it. Okay. That is extremely cool. And it's actually beautiful, too. Like, I mean, for, <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a very good track record with plants. I'm going to tell you, Brad, like, I don't everything I try eventually it just dies um, so <laughs> perfect this is for you then because it's just it's add water plug and play and add water type thing right right, right and yeah. then you can leave and forget and if something goes wrong or your cat goes and eats one of the plants which has happened I've got lots of people with cats oh wow okay um, so then they'll be like hey this cat uh, ate my plant okay well we'll put a new plant in it's super easy it just pops in and out it's right. little modular inserts and okay. this is just a small one we've got different sizes and we do custom installations too okay Awesome. That's absolutely. So this is a biofilter system. Is that what it you're is? A, yeah. People will classify it as a biofilter or a bioremediation uh, okay. system. Yeah. And that's a safe system, obviously. Obviously, it's totally organic. Absolutely. Okay. It's 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 really simple. It's deviously simple. It's it's like if you were to go outside and scoop up a bit of the dirt. There's so much going on there in mm -hmm. a microscopic level. We're just taking advantage of that biodiversity in the soil, interacting with our host plants um, to increase the amount of pollutants that we can actively consume and break down organic material okay. and dust and increase our oxygen levels so it, it doesn't just lower co2 i should point out that it also increases it's turning the co2 actively into oxygen right so Which you don't is have what to, plants do that's what a lot of plants do but we mm -hmm. didn't realize it's just starting to become more well understood and really not well understood actually all i should, should say because we know less about what's going on and the few feet below our uh, uh, of our feet of in the soil uh, than we do um, in space and, right. and, and we, we kind of know nothing about space so hopefully that puts it into reference uh, there's a lot out there and this is a really interesting industry that's just starting to get a little bit more ground and and working on the relationship between plants that we see mm -hmm. and what we we don't see very readily uh, that's underneath the the soil like fungi 
Awesome, and yeah, because I was just like, I didn't even realize that was a part of it, right? So Huge, huge, huge part of it, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, okay. massive part. Soil biodiversity are buscular mycorrhizal fungi. The ones that we don't see, everyone thinks of fungi as mushrooms that yeah. pop up out of the <laughs> ground. Say so, yes. Hey, that's a mushroom, there's a fungi. Um, no, there's ones that live completely underground, uh, if you will, They and they're very, very fine, like finer than spider webs, if you can imagine, wow, okay. or hairs, if very fine filaments, and they will like flower, if you will, underground ground um, and let spend their entire cycle underground and growing underground. We never really see them. They interact with plants and okay. they will share nutrients with them, but they increase that plant's benefits and multiply the effect of the plant. So it's worth more than the sum of its parts, if you will. Right. When they're, when they're working together, they're better than they would be on their own. Right. So it's almost like a tiny little forest miracle that's happening it's in your house and, and, and cleaning the air. Like, I think that's just so important. And I, I I, I, anyways, this, this technology, I'm assuming, is fairly new. It is uh, fairly new. There's only about, I'd say, about a handful of companies in the space. Uh, we're patented in Canada and the USA. We're the only one working with soil in our systems. Okay. The, all the other ones are working with, like, hydroponic-based systems. Okay. You, people have probably seen, like, green walls and stuff like that in condominiums. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a similar type of system. Ours is just, like I said, a little bit more ro robust in that we're taking a full advantage of that that ecosystem that you just described that mm -hmm. that it's it's in nature so it kind of made sense to us to bring it all into one system right um, instead of just also a hydroponic system you have to maintain them a little bit more closely so right. someone who's not a green thumb mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily do as well with the green wall <laughs> <laughs> no probably not this probably is, not this yeah. is more hardy easy plug and play like i said and if something goes wrong you swap a plant out and it's okay well that, that i mean that's 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 definitely good to know for sure um because i think what happens with, let's say for instance somebody's going up to their cottage almost all the time and what happens if you forget to to put the water back in is it just a matter of rep replacing the plants because uh, they will die absolutely so like yeah in the case where all of the plants go to complete the complete to some and i've had you know my uncle did that and he left it completely dry for months on end and then he came back and they're just crispified <laughs> <laughs> so right. there is the capacity to completely forget about watering it yeah in the built-in systems it's not because they're hard lined into a water source okay so you'd be gone and it'd be completely fine no issues okay. there okay. if you've got one of the standalone versions ideally maybe if you've got someone coming to feed the cat or the pet while you're gone too they can pour some water in it but mm -hmm. Having uh, the ability to stretch the water, you could stretch it easily to a month and a half, maybe to two months if you really needed to. Wow. Okay. Um, so there's an uh, ample onboard water supply, and then you would just spread the watering out a little bit more. It's okay. completely programmable. Amazing. So, I mean, we only have about a minute left, but um, so the maintenance on it itself is is virtually nothing. It's yes, it's very simple. It's add w if ideally, like we have tons of businesses where we do the maintenance as well, mm -hmm. um, so they don't have to lift a finger. But ideally, we're just going in there and adding water once every two weeks and doing a checkup okay. uh, to make sure that the plants look good. We're pruning because it's kind of like having a garden service inside, uh, right. it's, it, but it's having year-round access to plants and and fresh air and oxygen that. Uh, is a huge benefit for sure. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, Brad, thank you so much for uh, coming in and, and sharing all this information. I find it truly um, interesting and something to think about. My pleasure. Wonderful, and thank you for joining us. Until next time, bye bye for now. So we're still. TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media.
the regulars, the guys who keep this place in business. Last week, they had something to celebrate. Jason had just finished university, so they toasted his